Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the amortization of a prior service cost as it relates to pension expense. In this session, I'm going to focus specifically on prior service cost. There are five components for the pension expense, the service cost, the amortization of a prior service cost, interest on liability, actual return, gain slash losses. In the prior session, we covered the, the service cost, interest on liability, and actual return on plan asset. Again, I will discuss gains and losses and work an example in the next session. In this session, I'm going to focus specifically on how do we amortize prior service cost, which in turn increases the pension expense. So let's see, what is prior service cost? Well, it's a retro retroactive benefits for employee. What does that mean? So let's assume for a particular company, they started business in 2020. And uh, nine years later, in year 2029, let's assume that's the case, nine years later, the company decided to start a pension plan for their employees. They, they wanted to give their employee benefits, the company is doing well, so on and so forth. So they started in 2020, but now it's 2029. What they want to do, they want to go back and reward all those employees that worked for them starting at 2020, assuming they are still with the company by 2029. So this is what we mean by retroactive benefits. Going back and they will basically do a study and say, okay, it's going to cost us, for example, $5 million to have, uh, to, to have in order to reward those employees with this benefit plan. Well, what does that mean? It means out of nowhere in 2029, now you have $5 million in additional expenditure that you're going to have to somehow put on your books. And we're going to see how we're going to deal with this. But that's the point of a prior service cost. Or let's assume in 2029, the company decided to amend their plan. They want to give more benefit to their old and current employees. They want to give more benefit. If that's the case, well, that's going to be listed under prior service cost because let's assume right now your total liability is 10 million then you decided to give more benefits to your employee your actuary is going to tell you well bump it up to 12 million well if that's the case you made an amendment then you have you are rewarding employees for prior service it's a prior service cost the question is what do we do with this 5 million well expense related to the prior service cost parked first in OCI and other comprehensive income. So what's going to happen is this. Once we come up with that number, $5 million, this is going to be our cost to start this pension plan and reward all the employees. Well, we're going to park that $5 million. We're not going to expense it yet. We're going to park it in OCI. Then we are going to expense, amortize. We're going to go into amortize either using the straight line method over the remaining useful life over the remaining useful life of the employees or years of service method, which is preferable. So simply put, initially what we do is when we decide that it's going to be $5 million, we're going to debit OCI, which is which is an equity account. We're going to reduce OCI by $5 million, increase our PBO by $5 million. Now we have additional obligation. Then over the years, what's going to happen, we're going to amortize this OCI to expense. So over the years, let's assume five years, so we're going to debit 1 million in expense cred uh, sorry debit 1 million in expense and remove 1 million from OCI starting to redu reduce OCI over 5 years so this is the idea the idea is not to let the 5 million hit the expense all at once and this is, and how did i amortize that here i assume it's 5 years so let's take a look at years of service method because the straight line is pretty straightforward how to do this let's look at how years of service method is used Assume Adam Company's defined benefit plan covers 170 employees. Adam amends its pension plan on January 1st, X1, and grant an additional $80,000 of a prior service cost to its employee. Simply put, Adam Company wants to reward their employees a little bit more. They said, okay, amend the plan, and I'm going to add an additional $80,000 in, in, in benefits. Well, let's take a look at their employee structure. Well, this is I broke them down by by division it doesn't have to it could be broken down by by sections groups so on and so forth here's what's going to happen they have 40 staff and those 40 staff expected to retire 20x1 which is the end of the year 40 staff administrative people we have 20 of them they're going to expect it to retire by the end of 
20x2. They're going to be with us for two years. IT group, we have 40 employees, and they're expected to be with us for three years. Factory workers, we have 50 employees, and they're expected to be with us 20x1, 20x2, 20x3, 20x4, four years, and the high-level employees, we have 20 of them, and they're expected to be with us for until 20x5, for five years. So how do we do, how do we figure out how to amortize if we have the, how to amortize this 80,000 using years of service method what's going to happen is this we're going to break it down by year we're going to break it down by year and position and the staff will be with us for one year only right after that they retire expected to retire by december 31st x1 the administrative group we have 20 employees those 20 employees they're going to be with us in year one so they're going to be with us in x1 and they're going to be with us for X2 because they retire in 20X2. The third group, IT, they'll, well, they're going to be with us for year X1. They're going to be with us for year X2. And they're going to be with us for year X3. Then basically the assumption is they retired, so on and so forth. So what we do is we can compute, we can compute the total of years. The total of years is 500 years. And this is the the number of employee by staff but the total of years is 500 years for all the employee broken down this way so now we're going to take the eighty thousand dollar which is the prior service cost and amortize it divided by 500 and that's going to be our cost per one single year so basically what's going to happen is this in 20x1 we had 170 years well, how did we come up with 170? It's right here, year X1. Now, don't confuse the 170 with the total employees of 170. And if we take $80,000 divided by $80,000 divided by 500, it's going to give us $160 cost per year. In X1, 170, this is the amount that we will am amortize. In year X2, we're going to have 130 um, service years, again, times 160 equal to the amortization amount. All, all in all, this is the 80,000 that's going to be amortized. So simply put, as we amortize it, this number will go down. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at a comprehensive example. Before we look at the example, I'm glad you are you are watching. You're most you're most likely students taking an intermediate accounting course. That's a great. I'm glad you are. Farhatlectures.com. I have accounting courses and in, including intermediate accounting. That's going to give you detailed explanation practice multiple choice questions, practice true false exercises. That's going to help you reinforce the concept that you learned. Don't shortchange yourself. Farhat Lectures will help you do better in your accounting class. And if you're studying for your CPA exam or other courses, I do have resources. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Like this recording. If you're watching, it's helping you. Please like it. It will help others as well. Sh connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look at this example, starting with the projected benefit obligation before the amendment, 570,000. So this is one one year X one. So this is their, this is what they, what they expect to have an obligation as of this date. They have planned asset of, of this for the same date, 556,200. And if you notice, we have more obligation than assets at this time. The plan is underfunded, and it's underfunded by 13,800. Now. How do we use the worksheet? Well, the worksheet on the worksheet, the PBO goes right here, 570, the plan asset 556, 200, and the difference is starting the liability on the balance sheet. On January 1st, 20X1, Adam went through a plan amendment and they increased the, the, their cost, their prior service cost to 130,000. So this is what we're gonna be dealing with. How, how are we gonna deal with this prior service cost? We'll see. Service cost for the year is 60,000. There are other elements to this exercise, but I'm going to first work those. Then on the next slide, on the next slide, I will have a complete worksheet. So I would like to go through this step by step. In addition to that, we have a settlement rate of 9% for the debt. Starting, we're going to we're going to post the PBO, the beginning PBO 570, the beginning plan asset 555 Fifty-six two hundred. The difference is a pension liability because the difference is thirteen thousand eight hundred of underfunded liability. Now we introduce under the prior service cost. The beginning prior service cost is one thirty. Then we're going to increase our projected benefit obligation by one thirty. 
So simply put, the journal entry specifically for this 130, let me show you the journal entry specifically for 130. We're going to debit OCI and, you know, keep that in mind because we're going to see a different entry later, debit OCI and credit PBO. So what we did is we reduce our equity, increase our liability specifically for this entry. Now you're going to see later that we debited OCI, we're going to credit OCI something else, but just make a note of this. Now, our PBO, our adjusted PBO is $700,000. Now the liability increased further, right? Because we have 700,000, only we have 556, 200 of assets. Now, the, the employee worked for us one additional year and we said the prior service cost for this example is 60,000. Now we're going to start to keep track of our pension expense. We're going to debit, I'm sorry, we're going to increase pension expense by 60, which we will debit pension expense, and we will increase our obligation by 60 because now the pension expense for this year, it increases our obligation. Now our obligation is 760. Now, interest cost. Well, we have to compute the interest cost on the liability. The liability is 700,000, this liability here, and the settlement rate is 9%, so that's going to give us interest cost of 63,000. So the interest cost interest cost will be debited to pension expense, will increase pension expense, and obviously it's going to increase our PBO, projected benefit obligation, projected benefit obligation. So those are the entries I'm going to work on this slide. On the next slide, I'm going to keep going with this example. So just bear in mind, if you want to take a picture of this, otherwise it's right here. So I'm going to keep going. Actual and expected return on the plan assets were 50,000. What does that mean? It means the plan assets that we invested earned 50,000. How is that going to help us? Well, it's going to reduce our pension expense. So notice it's a negative pension expense and it's going to increase our plan assets. It's going to increase our plan asset. The company made a contribution of $60,000. Well, if the company wrote a check to the administration of the pension plan, to the bank, to the financial institution, their cash is going to go down by 60 right? But they're going to have more plan asset. Their plan asset will go up by 60 because they, they put that $60,000 cash in the account. Then benefit paid to retiree. Who pays this benefit? The administration of the plan. This is outside the company. So don't we don't credit cash for this 30000 If we pay 30000 of our obligation, it's going to reduce our obligation. No, this is a plus. It's going to reduce our obligation by 30, but we paid the 30,000 out of the planned assets. It's going to reduce our planned asset by 30,000 as well. And we come up to the prior service amortization cost. We decided to amortize. We don't know how we come up with this. It just it doesn't matter what, whether it's the straight line or the sums of years digit or years of service digit. Now we're going to deal with the prior service cost and we happen to be given us the number at 17,000. We don't care how they come up with this amortization number. We, we are told you're going to amortize 17,000. How is that going to help? Well, now part of it, it's going to leave OCI. It's going to leave OCI and go to pension expense. Therefore, we're going to increase pension expense and we're going to start to reduce OCI start to reduce OCI. And basically, we accounted for everything that we need to account for except gains and losses, which we don't have in this example. I will work gain and losses in the next session. Now, let's take a look at what we have when we add up all our pension expense. 60 plus 63 minus 50 plus 17. Our pension expense is 90,000. Cash paid 60,000. The, the prior service cost, remember the prior service cost, this is an OCI. Remember what we did first, we debited OCI. Now we credited OCI. So what's left in OCI is 113 in a sense that we're gonna, ha we did, now bear in mind, all what we did now is just we put it on the worksheet. So what's going to happen is you're going to see the net effect of it. You're going to see the net effect. In what sense? In a sense that I'm going to show you I'm debiting OCI for that amount, but you will see the net effect of it later. Okay. But this is the, because this is year one, simply put on, on a piece of paper, I said, well, I started with 130 minus 17. I need to put on the books 113. Okay. Because at the end of the year, you're doing this. Therefore, we're going to see this will be a debit to OCI. Why a debit? Well, 
because basically what happened is this first I debited OCI 130 credited PBO 130 now I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna have to debit OCI I'm gonna I'm sorry I'm gonna debit not OCI I'm gonna credit OCI I'm gonna debit pension expense I'm just gonna put it as an expense 17,000 and credit OCI 17,000 so th those are the two entries if you're gonna go entry by entry so notice if you debited OCI 130 credited OCI 130 this is a net of a debit so that's why you're gonna see later I debited OCI for 113 now am I done yet absolutely not now I'm gonna compute I'm gonna add up all my plan asset at the end of the year all my projected benefit obligation and I find out now my pension underfunded balance actually increased further so what's the difference between 793 and 636 200 156 800 this is my new pension liability this is my new liability and hold on a second how much do I have a, have a liability as of the beginning of the year 13,800 so I'm gonna have to go from 13,800 as a liability balance underfunded to 156 800 what am I looking for I'm looking for the difference what is the difference the difference is 143,000 the difference is a credit of 143,000 now we are ready to process the journal entries now bear in mind we're not we're not assuming anything in the AOCI from the prior year we're assuming zero other um, accumulated other comprehensive income if you had a balance you have to to take care of that balance but we're assuming none so now let's take a look at the journal entry that we will prepare for this example again pension expense 90,000 we debit pension expense 90,000 other comprehensive income we're going to debit other comprehensive income 113 and explain to you why we are debiting this account 113 because you said we're going to be reducing it this is year one this is year one okay we debited we debit OCI for 113 we're gonna credit pension assets slash liability 143 which is why why are we doing this 143 because in this pension asset slash liability we started with 13,800 we end up with 156 800 what we're missing is this 143 and we paid cash of 60,000 always make sure your debits are equal to your credits and this is gonna give us 203 and debits and 203 credits make sure those are equal to each other what should you do now go to farhatlectures.com if you're not a subscriber subscribe work additional mcqs true false exercises that's going to help you reinforce the concept invest in yourself your accounting education is extremely important and valuable to you in the future good luck and stay safe